I have very strong convictions, and I am very free to express them. And I believe that it is the responsibility of the educated people of Mississippi to try to help raise the level, economically, educationally, spiritually, and otherwise, of the people of Mississippi. There's nobody else that's going to come in here and do it for us. In 1972, George and Anna Kersley McLean established the CREATE Foundation. One of the motivating factors for the McLeans was to provide a vehicle for their newspaper to always be locally owned. They felt a local newspaper had a lot to do with the growth of a community and making it a better place for people to live. The, the motto of the paper was uh, a locally owned newspaper dedicated to the service of God and mankind. Mr. McLean bought the newspaper, he used to say he bought it from a bankrupt newspaper from a bankrupt bank in 1934 and he bought it uh, to use as a tool for economic and community development for Tupelo and Northeast Mississippi. Uh, the journal established or created, create, through its gift of stock, which that in the 1970s was, he'd been offered $20 million from the New York Times to sell the newspaper and other media companies throughout the, the country. But he wasn't interested in the personal accumulation of wealth. He was interested in, in reinvesting his wealth and his company's profits into the community building process. Mr. McLean was determined to leave the, the journal. That was his hope, to leave that to the, to the community so that they could grow. He was never interested in the wealth for himself. He had such a vision for what was going to go on in Tupelo. The height of his vision was higher than anybody I've ever known. And he worked with the Create first CREATE board to make sure he thought he had it where it could function well after he was gone. And of course, Ms. McLean supported him 100%. Then in 1973, McLean gave his newspaper to his nonprofit foundation, Christian Research Education Action Technical Enterprises, CREATE, making CREATE the sole stockholder in what is now Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal. From CREATE's beginning assets of $1,492 to the next 40 years, paired with over $16 million in dividends from the Daily Journal newspaper, the CREATE Foundation became a highly effective and influential partner for Northeast Mississippi. At the first board meeting of CREATE in 1972, the McLeans indicated that they had several areas that they were particularly interested in. The first was the growth and development of the very young, from zero to five years old. They also felt like it was important to train people in vocational technical skills to help them get a job to provide for their families. Leadership development was also important for the McLeans. They felt like this was a key component for any community to grow and to be the best that it can be. They also wanted to help people with their charitable giving, to provide a vehicle to encourage them uh, in their giving. It's actually pretty remarkable when you think about here we are 50 years later and many of these same things the McLeans were talking about at the first meeting of CREATE are still very important to us and to the growth and development of our region. With the establishment of CREATE's first special project, the Association of Excellence in Education, 30 Tupelo public school district parents began a fund enhancing the quality of classroom instruction. To date, AEE has granted over $4 million to enhance education and has exposed hundreds of parents, teachers, and members of the general public to CREATE. AEE's purpose initially was to try to fund with private funds a number of programs that the public schools could not afford otherwise. And that was our intent. 
if it had remained the 30 couples, it would be exclusive. Because these things start with people who have sufficient income to make these contributions and are willing to make them. Every legitimate mother and father with children in school want the best thing for their kids. Some of them just don't have the funds to give a lot of money, but you don't have to give a lot of money if everybody will give some money, then you have the four million dollars. CREATE's efforts to connect and unify communities highlighted the need for a regional approach to solve challenges specific to our area, leading to the establishment in 1995 of the Commission on Northeast Mississippi. The Commission on the Future of Northeast Mississippi is a group of leaders from 17 counties who come together to work on regional unity and cooperation, and they do this through regional community development. Our commission and commission members really act as a, a, a uniting force for us to connect to the goals of the state and region by providing us resources, giving us opportunities to work with other communities, and to focus on the things we need to be a thriving community, such as workforce development and community development. I feel like the commission has a great vision. Um, for how education feeds workforce. We are seeing that in our community with the addition of the career coaches. And we are seeing the impact she is having on the students and how that is um, translating into employees, into our workforce. I love how CREATE is just excited um, to work with workforce and education together to catapult our communities forward. But mostly I love how they're not afraid to say this is not working and we need to figure out how to do this better or we need to figure out how to do this in a different way to serve our community and our students. Another milestone in 1997 marked the establishment of CREATE's community affiliate program, which began CREATE's regional philanthropic efforts. A donation of $750,000 from Anna Kiersey McLean and a special dividend of $750,000 from the Daily Journal resulted in a $1.5 million fund established at CREATE to provide matching money for the formation of community affiliates throughout the region. The first two community affiliates to be established were CARE and Target. We wanted to do something that would make an impact on current and a lasting impact and be noticeable. And I feel like we were fortunate to arrive at that idea and um, constructed the CARE Honor Garden. But it wasn't just the fact that it was CARE Honor Garden. It was uh, literally across the railroad track from downtown. And we revitalized a depressed area there that uh, has not only become a fantastic venue for all sorts of things, but it opened up an avenue of a whole street there for uh, retail and other types of business. CARE has not just been um, an organization to grant, provide grants for other projects from other people or continuation money for existing organizations. While we do some of that, usually on an annual basis. We also like to fit out projects that, that we see a need for. I think that we have to do a lot in our community to promote the idea of economic development and social development for our people and educational opportunities are a must. But I'll tell you what, it doesn't come without constantly working at it and it doesn't happen overnight, and it doesn't happen with just one or two volunteers. It takes a community, and it takes a board, and it takes people who are really committed to it and believe in it. As CREATE transitioned to a regional organization through the commission and the affiliates, its impact expanded to establish the Northeast Mississippi Youth Foundation in 2001. 
I think the Northeast Mississippi Youth Foundation allows students to see what it means to have an endowment, to have something that has longevity, to fundraise and to give something that's bigger than themselves. I have the pleasure of serving as the current coordinator of the Northeast Mississippi Youth Foundation, which has really come full circle as I was an NEMYF student. Um, so I had the pleasure of participating in these activities of meeting other students across Northeast Mississippi. And in reflecting on that, I have friends that I have made, relationships I've developed with individuals that without NEMYF wouldn't have existed. Um, and that has actually led me to be more involved in my work today. I hope that the Northeast Mississippi Youth Foundation continues to grow. Um, and I think about that in terms of growth of the endowment funds so that we can give more money back to our respective communities and also growth of the board. I'd like to make sure we represent all 17 counties every year and that we're developing those relationships and leaders across our true uh, CREATE portfolio. One of the notable gifts to the CREATE Foundation was the $8.7 million March Banks Endowment Fund established from the estate of John March Banks, a native of Shannon, Mississippi. John March Banks grew up in Shannon, uh, had a hard time uh, growing up, so he, he saw that uh, there were a lot of people, including his family, uh, that were struggling uh, to make ends meet. John moved out west, uh, had a successful career in construction, uh, was a smart investor, uh, and at his death, he uh, left $8.7 million uh, to create. That fund is over uh, $10 million now and several million dollars being contributed from that fund to, to support a lot of, uh, of entities. Uh, the, really, the only direction that we were given uh, from the March Banks was they wanted to give people a helping hand to get on their feet to live a better life. And so that has been really our guide of, from the CREATE Grant Committee to invest in those things that we truly believe would make a difference in people's lives to help them, as March Mike said, to live a better life. When Toyota announced their location in 2007, part of the discussions with the people involved in locating Toyota was about a significant gift that Toyota wanted to make to benefit the community. Little did we know that uh, this gift was going to be the magnitude that it ended up being of $50 million, $5 million a year uh, for, for 10 years. And again, the instructions from Toyota on this gift were very simple. They wanted to uh, enhance K-12 public education in the three counties that worked together to locate them. And at the end of the 10 years, they wanted to see $50 million uh, in this fund so it would be there uh, to support the, the programs in perpetuity. I'm very happy to say that uh, we're now over $60 million in the Toyota Fund, uh, and it is really doing some, I think, life-changing things with career coaches, our career expo, giving significant grants to the eight school districts in the three counties. It, as they say, is truly a game changer. There is a general disconnect with the youth of our society right now. Popularity of gaming, popularity of, of social media, popularity of activities. They're, they're typically young people. They, they enjoy each other's company. They enjoy their school activities. But um, until they're about a junior or senior, they really don't think about what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. And they make a decision upon graduation that is very impactful. But they're not prepared to make those decisions because they don't have all the information and they haven't focused on what that decision outcome will be eventually in their careers. And so both imagine the possibilities and the career coaches uh, help them channel their activities and energies into potential futures. The Career Expo is important because it opens children's eyes to so many possibilities. Children who have been raised in maybe a vacuum, in a fishbowl, they've only been exposed to certain opportunities, what their parents have told them about, maybe what someone has come and introduced them to at the school on career day. But this expo allows them to put their hands in 
activities that allows them to say, hey, wait a minute, there's a possibility I can do that. What I love about it is the name says imagine the possibilities and it gives every child the opportunity to imagine any possibility for his or her life. I was a student with a lot of goals but nowhere to start. So when I got to know Miss Lunsford, she had many contacts and many ways to see where I could start off now to reach my future goals. This is the beauty of the career coaches that we can start this relationship. It's a blessing to be able to connect students to people who are in the field who know. She has been a great gift and in turn helped many students just because of Toyota Well Spring. Efforts such as the District of Innovation legislation passed in 2016 provides schools with opportunities to innovatively partner with business, industries, and the local community to provide unique career experiences for students. The CREATE Foundation has developed and expanded, I think, far beyond what any of us would have dreamed of early on. I think it's really exciting to look forward. Uh, you, you, we reflect back on the, the first 50 years and the things that have been accomplished, uh, the tremendous growth that we have seen in uh, our, the assets of CREATE just in, in 25 years going from a little over $13 million to over $160 million. Uh, so I think the, the resources are a key part of moving forward, but I really think the most important thing are the relationships that we have, the partnerships that we have in place, and really the infrastructure, I think, that we have in place with our staff and our capacity to both help donors accomplish their charitable giving interest but also to really lead the way in even more partnerships and executing programs that, uh, that make a difference. CREATE allows donors to give with confidence because we are a trusted fiduciary organization built on integrity, reputation, and results like the millennials and all the other generations that are coming forward. We want them to see all the different things that you can do with charitable giving and the difference that you can make. If you see a need in your community, if it's beyond what you feel is your ability to do that, then there's a foundation here that will help you connect you with other like-minded individuals so that you can accomplish a lot as well. They did have done so much. You think in your mind what CREATE has accomplished through their initial gift. But even Mr. McLean or Ms. McLean could never have imagined the impact it was going to have on the area. And I say area, not just Tupelo. And that's, maybe this is only the beginning. We've come a long ways, but maybe this is, maybe we're going to have a new beginning for our next 50 years.